Now we're going to talk about how is heat generated and gained. So uh, these are different ways uh, body gains heat, metabolism, food, environment, physical activity, shivering, vasoconstriction, pyloerection, and chemical thermogenesis. So these are some of the ways. So what's the mechanism behind the heat generation or retention of the heat? So pre-optic area of anterior hypothalamus senses cold temperature of the blood and posterior hypothalamus receives temperature signals from peripheral skin and visceral body receptors and so anterior hypothalamus then sends the signals to uh, posterior hypothalamus and those signals uh, get integrated um, in the posterior hypothalamus and then appropriate response uh, is generated to gain heat. So uh, what's the mechanism of shivering? Uh, shivering is located uh, in the dorsomedial uh, portion of posterior hypothalamus. So dorsomedial portion of posterior hypothalamus gets stimulated by cold signals from skin and viscera center transmit signals down to anterior motor neurons they, uh, which activate alpha and gamma motor neurons that innervate skeletal muscle extrafusal fiber and muscle spindle respectively so alpha and motor neurons innervate extrafusal fibers and gamma motor neurons innervate muscle spindle muscle tone is increased to a point where rapid cyclical contraction occurs uh, mediated by mu muscle spindles uh, so muscle spindles are basically stretch receptors and muscles and this is how shivering is produced and you'll uh, learn more uh, mechanism about uh, muscle spindles and stretch of muscles in neuroscience so how's chemical or non-shivering thermogenesis occurs uh, epinephrine, norepinephrine, growth hormone, thyroxine, brown fat uh, exercise fatty acids and fatty acids or uh, if, if you eat steak all stimulate thermogenesis via same mechanism that is uncoupling of oxidative phosphorylation in electron transfer chain in mitochondria and um, resulting in production of heat instead of ADP so sympathetic nervous system also increases and uh, basal metabolic rate that's how it causes uh, thermogenesis as well brown fat that is mostly present in the uh, neonates uh, have uh, increased mitochondria mitochondria and has uh, increased sympathetic innervation so more mitochondria more um, thermogenesis more energy produced and uh, increased sympathetic innervation causes so you have more uh, BMR and uh, that is also going to cause heat generation so as I mentioned infants have high proportion of brown adipose tissue so what's the mechanism so most of all of these basically all of these basically have same mechanism of uh, non shivering thermogenesis which is which I'm going to talk about now so cold temperature of blood stimulates posterior hypothalamus uh, and how does it uh, stimulate posterior hypothalamus? Basically, uh, anterior uh, preoptic area of anterior hypothalamus uh, senses the cold temperature of the blood and sends the signals to posterior hypothalamus. Posterior hypothalamus has sympathetic centers which get stimulated. Sympathetic nervous system causes an uh, increase of epinephrine, norepinephrine in the blood. And that stimulates beta-3 adrenergic receptors on adipose tissue. And it stimulates uh, GS protein bound to GDP at rest. At rest, gets stimulated. GS releases GDP. G stimulatory uh, subunit releases. Um, G stimulatory protein releases GDP and binds GTP at alpha subunit. So alpha subunit plus GTP dissociates from GS protein and activate at an allyl cyclase. At an allyl cyclase converts ATP to cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP activates protein kinase A, 
which phosphorylates, as we know that kinases are the enzymes that add a phosphate group. And so basically phos uh, protein kinase A phosphorylates hormone sensitive lipoprotein lipase HSL and activates it. So this protein, uh, this lipase basically uh, increases lipolysis and this uh, mechanism increases the lipoprotein lipase production and also produces thermogenin. Thermogenin is basically a protein that uncouples electron transport chain. Lipoprotein lipase increases fatty acids. Fatty acids, free fatty acids activate thermogenin and uh, which is in also inhibited by G, which is inhibited by GDP and ADP. As I mentioned, thermogenin is an uncoupling protein. The location for that is inner mitochondrial membrane. Why is that the location? Because an electron transport chain is present in inner mitochondrial membrane and that's where it uncouples the oxidative phosphorylation. So thermogenin functions as a proton uniporter, forms pores in mitochondrial membrane. So proton ions pass through these pores instead of passing through ADP synthase and that's how it uncouples oxidative phosphorylation and heat is produced instead of ATP. So let me quickly go and give you like a, a visual of that. So you have this electron transport chain, you have these uh, complex one, two, three, four, and then you have this ADP synthase. And this is complex five right here. And this is ADP synthase. And uh, basically this thermogenin, this protein right here, the uncoupler forms its own pores. It's this is thermogenin right here and so electrons instead of passing through uh, ATP um, they pass through thermogenin and that passage produces heat uh, instead of uh, ATP so these uh, complex 1, NADH, uh, FADH they increase their uh, reactions as well and that increase in reaction rate also produces increase uh, in heat generation. So moving on. So that was short term, relative short term, and then now we're going to talk about long term thermogenesis, and that occurs via thyroid hormone. So decreased temperature of blood for several weeks, detected by preoptic area of anterior hypothalamus. You have inc so that anterior hypothalamus uh, stim uh, stimulates production of thyrotropin releasing hormone in hypothalamus and increased thyroid that causes increase in thyroid stimulating hormone and interior pituitary and that stimulates production of thyroxine from thyroid gland thyroxine and now it thyroxine activates thermogenin we already talked about the whole mechanism it is an uncoupling protein also raises uh, bmr thyroxine also raises bmr of cells and uh, how does it um, so how does it work? Thyroxine increases permeability of cells to sodium ions and uh, that stimulates sodium potassium ADPase pump to pump out all that sodium that was uh, gone in the cell and that hydroly hydrolyzed ADP in this, in this process releases heat. In, so you know, we find that in, there's increased thyroid hormone in Eskimos and people live in an arctic temperatures and that is um, they have uh, more cases of goiters. Exercise induced thermogenesis all, can also occur. Um, increased physical activity you know, leads to formation of increased hormone uh, irisin from muscles. This irisin Hormone stimulates expression of thermogenin, UCP1, on adipose tissue, and that leads to increased heat production and energy utilization via uh, uncoupling of oxidative phosphorylation 
and that fav um, is favorable for reducing body adipose tissue and um, helps in uh, obesity as well, uh, preventing obesity.